What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Obviously in today's tutorial we're learning how to make googly eyes. So, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Let's get started. Okay, now that we're in After Effects and my eyes are back to normal, um, we can start working on this. So, um, to get started we need to make the googly eye. You know, the little shaky eye that we see here. Really simple, I couldn't find anything online to download, so we're just gonna make it ourselves. So we're gonna right click new composition inside of After Effects. It pops open this cool little dialog box. We can go like 1920 by 1080. Um, make a nice little HD composition, click okay. Just like that, and then we'll grab our circle tool up here. Tool, tool, said that weird. The ellipse tool, um, and we'll hold shift on our keyboard and we'll drag out an ellipse. Now mine is black. Let's change this to white with the fill option up here and right here. Then we'll do click off on the layers so nothing's highlighted. Click the circle tool one more time and draw out a smaller one and make it black for the highlight. Now our, our eye looks pretty cartoony right now. We need to add like a little bit of a highlight. Now this doesn't have to be super realistic, just to give it a little bit of an edge. So we'll right click our shape layer, go to layer styles and bevel and emboss. And we'll go down the bevel and emboss options, kind of mess around with these. Maybe bring the size up a bunch, bring the opacity down a little bit on shadow opacity. And just like that, looks a little more in depth. Do the same thing with our shape layer two, layer styles, bevel and emboss. Um, we'll go to our bevel and emboss right here. We'll change the highlight color to black and our shadow color to white on the eye iris actually because you gotta reverse it because the eye is black. I think I messed that up. No, I didn't mess it up. I gotta change the shadow mode to normal so we can actually see it and then change the size a little larger and we'll probably like spin it around or something. Give it a little more of an edge. So now if you zoom out, it looks more googly eye like what you see in all the comic books or in the stores. So to reiterate, we created two circles, one black, one white. We added a bevel and emboss to each one and changed the settings around until it looked like a nice shadow on both. And we reversed the colors on the black so the shadow is white instead of black. Um, now, we need to make that movement that we see that the eye just kind of moves the whole time. So what we'll do is we'll take shape layer 2, which is the pupil, and we'll parent it to shape layer 1. So, parenting will just, when we grab the, the, the parent layer, it'll always move the, la the smaller layer. So in this case, shape layer 2 is parented to shape layer 1, which means shape layer 2 will always follow where 1 goes. Now, if you don't see your parenting option, just right click in this bar, go to columns, and then click parent and link. It'll open up this option for you down here, so don't stress. Now, what we can do is click shape layer 2, which is the pupil, hit P on our keyboard. Now, if you click on this layer and you see this little movement dot here, this little anchored point, it's somewhere else, you want to put it kind of in the center of the circle. So we'll grab this tool right here, um, pan behind, click it, grab the anchor point wherever it is, hold Alt or Command on your keyboard, and it will not do what we want it to do. It's Control on your keyboard, I'm sorry and you will ping it to the middle of the object. It's a quick little shortcut for you. Now, what we'll do is click P on our keyboard on Shape Layer 2, uh, click Alt or Command on your keyboard for real this time, and click the little stopwatch. It opens up the expression panel. We are going to type wiggle, um, parentheses 5 comma 10. That'll be somewhat aggressive of a movement. So basically, wiggle is the expression that makes your objects constantly move a little bit so like every something frames 10 pixels I think you can look it up but it makes it move and as we can see the googly eye will constantly move and to finish off this wiggle I did play around the expression a little more and I actually changed the expression from our original numbers to 10 to the 30 or 10 comma 30 um, now you can play around with that a little more to figure out what you want exactly and kind of perfect your wiggle of the eye but that's it's how I did it so yep now we have our googly eye we are pretty much ready to go now I need to import my footage which is what we just used um, we just filmed and hopefully this works out. We're going to right click our footage and the new comp from selection, which is me in my tank top, not just a few minutes ago. Ooh, it's, we'll turn the noise off. We don't need that anymore. Um, so 
At this point is where I would normally start the video so we can not worry about the beginning. And right there. What we're gonna do is we are going to cut this footage off here, close this off to here. Composition, trim comp to work area, close this down some. And then we are going to go forward in our composition and find where I finished recording. That looks done, that looks done. Let's get started and stop right there. Close this composition down to here. We only want to work on what we actually need to work on as any good VFX artist would do. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click new null. Let's call this left eye rename, rename to left eye. And now that we have our left eye null created, which in this case, I think it's in real life, it's my right eye, kind of messed that up, whatever. Um, we're going to right click our footage and go to track and stabilize and then click track and then click track motion, which opens up this new box here, which is the layer from the composition, no problem. And it opens up this little track point box thing. Now what we'll do with that is we will cover up our whole eye right here, right? We're going to track this eye and everywhere that it goes. So. In your tracker over here that opens up inside of After Effects, we will uh, make sure position is checked, rotation and scale are off. We are not tracking the rotation or scale of this thing, and we will use the Analyze Forward to track the motion. In other scenarios, you may use rotation or scale, but in this case, we're not. So let's track forward, see what happens. Now this is going really slow, so what I'm gonna do is actually close down my tracker box and just do like, this part of my eye and we'll close this down as well which should speed it up so it's analyzing less pixels now as we can see at this point when I blinked the tracker kind of messed up so what we'll do is we will open this up and we'll actually kind of manually fix this as we go so right here I'm good I'm starting to blink this moves up some we'll move it to the center of my eye Move it forward, move it to the center of the eye. Now you're gonna this you're gonna thank yourself in a long time after this is fixed. So we'll analyze one frame forward, one frame forward, one frame forward until my eye is opened up again. And we can click the uh, forward button again to keep it going. I blinked again, so we're gonna analyze forward manually to make sure I'm not gonna mess this up. Another blink. Seems like the tracker's still holding its own, which is great. And then click Analyze Forward. Oh wow, look at that. After Effects is really pulling this off. We will, the blinks, you want to stop this manually and do one at a time with Analyze One Frame Forward because if you just let this go and it jumped all over the place, you're not going to want to fix that later. It's better just to do it now. But the reason an eye tracks so well is there's a lot of contrast. You can see in my dark brown eye, there's that, there's a lot of white and on around my skin, so stuff like that really helps. How far along are we? Okay. I seem to blink again, so we're gonna zoom back in and we are going to fix the blink. Move it here, analyze one frame forward one frame forward, one frame forward, until I open my eyes back. Now this may seem a little tedious, one frame backward, but this is gonna save you a ton of time in the future. Cause like this right here, the track would go all over the place and it wouldn't be able to find its original position because it's only, it's only analyzing pixels. It's not actually analyzing what's in the frame. That's why track points are so important. And this should be the end. Oh, and see what happens there. We're going to go back in time by one frame and fix it as we go. Next frame is going to be right here. 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 
next frame, next frame. And we may be back to the automatic tracking here in a minute. I like to go one by one when, hey, I'm just looking at the camera now. We can auto track that. Okay, I'm happy with that. That track should be great. We can play it back, see what it looks like. Never mind, we can't. What we'll do is we'll click the, um, the tracker and we hit apply, which will apply the X and Y to the null. Click OK. Now our null, if we click it, should follow my eye. Now the best way to find out if this works or not is to go ahead and grab comp2, which is the eye that we created, and drag it into here, and we will scale it down because it's quite too large right now. And we will scale it down to right there, and we will actually parent it to the left eye null. Remember the parenting thing we did before? Parenting is such a powerful tool because now the eye will follow the tracker parent we created with the left eye null. So now it'll just follow it. And as you can see, it freaks out a little bit, but we have a tracked eyeball. Now you could perfect this easily with you know a few modifications to your track, a little more time, spend a little more time on it. It'll be perfect. There's a little wiggle right here that I think we can fix manually by going into the null, clicking U on our keyboard. You see all the position keyframes. We just zoom in, zoom into this eye, right there, it was here, it jumps here, jumps here, then it jumps off to the left and back over there. If we move this over and make it a single jump, it should be normal. And this going down really low is probably not a good thing. With a few manual tweaks, fixing this is not a huge deal. Move this up a little bit. Not that one, just the eye. So the last thing to do now is to track the other eye because it's actually on a different position in my head so we need to create another tracker. Not a big deal. We'll do new, null, and we'll rename it, call it right eye. You know, it's the wrong eye, but whatever. Um, we will right click this or hit click U and delete the old tracker. Right click, uh, track and stabilize, track motion. And from here, I think you got it. I think you can figure it out on how to track this motion of the eyeball. And uh, we'll go back in time actually to find my eye right here. Yeah. And we will track this motion and do the same thing as before. So time lapse, let's make this happen. Guys, you do not realize how much you blink until you have to track around blinking people. In this case, it's myself. I could have cheated and just recorded myself not blinking just to make it easier on myself, but I'm not doing that. I'm showing you what it will actually take when you record drone footage. Luckily, towards the end there, I stare at the camera, which makes it a lot easier. Okay, so we have tracked the other eye. What we're going to do now is apply, like before, and we'll apply the X and Y. Make sure our target is correct. Right eye. <laughs> our target is correct. It's the right eye. Um, click OK. And then click Apply. X and Y. Now, we have the nulls and the track stuff applied. We will bring in our duplication, duplicated comp of comp2. We'll just move it over and we will actually parent it to the right eye so it actually follows it this time and we'll take it and we'll actually hit R on our keyboard and rotate it. Because remember, currently the eye is shaking in the same direction as the other one because it's all the same composition. We don't want it to do that. We want it to look a little different. We'll rotate it like this and we'll make it a little larger or smaller or something. Um, maybe squish it down some. Maybe we'll squish this one this way. Give it a little more uh, pizzazz, rotate it. So now we have these crazy eyes. And if we play it, 
it should play back with eyes tracked to me. And that is how you make googly eyes on a person. And to push this one step further, it takes longer to render. But what we're gonna do is we're going to highlight all this besides uh, the actual footage. We're gonna right click and click, right click all the layers and do um, pre-compose right here. And when we pre-compose everything, it puts it all in a container for us. And click OK, pre-comp one. And we will go to effects and presets and type in CC F, which is CC Force Motion Blur, and drag it onto this effect. Now this will actually add some blur to our eyes as they move. As you can see, there's a little bit of a blur. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. If we turn the effect on and off, there is blur. Now it doesn't quite match the motion blur of me in real life. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Look at that. There's a lot of movement here, so it actually gives a good bit of blur, which will ha help you, you know, actually sell the effect. Now, the more samples you create, the smoother the blur it looks, but it significantly increases your render time, and the higher the shutter angle, the farther the blur goes. So if we went to 250 or something, it would be, you know, like a more dramatic shutter angle. But this looks pretty consistent. So that now is how you put googly eyes on somebody inside of After Effects. I did it a little bit quicker than I should have. I could have made my track a little better, but this should create or teach you the basics on how to do this. So, thank you for watching and taking the time. As always, I'm Max. I just said that, but I'll say it again. As always, I'm Max. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. If you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Let's grow those numbers. Let's make more videos. As always, peace.